Everybody wants to be the bad guy. Why you gotta be the bad guy? I just wanna be that guy. Hey, this is how we're training for the Olympics. Being in at work. Got 10 seconds, go! Flying airplanes first came about because I knew that both my grandparents were in the Air Force. So I was like, ah, this might be something I like. We have that checklist there. We're going to run through all those pre-flight checks, density, altitude, weather, all that stuff's good. Flight plan, we kind of talked about that in the office. So I went out and I did my first flight lesson. All right, there we go. We're looking for 1,000 RPMs, and we are all set. You ready to go? Got to fly around, and I got to take off. It was awesome. All right, climb us up to 1300, and we'll just keep going straight here. We're looking good. I flew. You know, I was like, I really did it. All right, now turn us the other way, but keep that nose down while you do it. A really cool thing about flying a plane is that at that point, you're in charge of your life. If you mess up, it really is a life or death scenario, you know? So it's kind of important to be on task and to be focused. All right, we can see our runway, so then you're going to time out that turn so we line up with it. Got to set up process for landing. There we go. That wasn't too bad. No, not too bad. <laughs> our time here is limited, you know? And I kind of try to take that in my life, and I try to live to the fullest that I can. And flying is one way you can actually, I feel like you're living. Like Kiki? When you see his Instagrams and stuff, or you see him doing flight lessons, like, this is really how he lives his life. He's genuinely himself with his experiences and really is open to sharing those with the public. Gandhi said, live as if you were to die today, learn as if you were to live forever. And I kind of take that to heart. I'm going to open this garage real quick. I have a lot of outlets. I have a lot of ways to, to kind of just get my mind going. You know, I'm not the type of guy that likes to just sit down and relax. I like having my mind busy. That's what gets my mind off boxing. The Rubik's Cube thing is a bunch of algorithms. Algorithms is just a funny way of saying patterns. And so you just have to memorize a couple patterns, and then you can learn how to solve a Rubik's Cube too. Being able to have all these other outlets helps with boxing a lot. But whenever it's like school or, or my outside life or interviews get to be too much, boxing is my release from that. And so it's this constant kind of pendulum swing of what is causing me stress and what's giving me relief. You know, it's slight work. I would do that in front of a pretty girl at high school and then she'd be like, oh, that's cool. But now I do it and people still say the same thing, but I think it's really cool. So. <laughs> He was watching boxing with his dad because they would always watch boxing, right? And that was just kind of like a thing they always did. So when the Olympics came on and that was the boxing portion, they would sit there and they would watch. Jeff. And then each year after that, though, every time that stuff rolled around, that's what he was going to do. And it was just in his heart and in his mind, that's what he was going to do from like eight years on. When he started saying, I'm going to the Olympics, says, well, first step, believe. And then uh, he started training. I got a picture of him uh, running, and uh, he's probably five, six years old. He's running, and he loses his shoe. You can see him, one shoe on, one shoe off. He wouldn't stop. He would not stop. He ran through stickers, ran through little stones, whatever. He is running, came in first, yeah. So all those things and stuff, it just kind of add up to this, OK, we got something here. I just said, OK, let's go. Let's keep going. You know, he set such high goals. He's like, I'm going to go to the Olympics. 
what are you gonna say? Well, no, probably no. You just like, oh, great, yes, you can. Okay, good job, you know? I never had a doubt in my mind, like, for a second that he was gonna do what he set out to do. So when he actually went to the Olympics, I wasn't really shocked. I thought it was just another step on his path. Look at this view. This is the Olympics, you know, this is freaking awesome. I'm so saying, like, this is awesome. I'd watch this stuff on television. This is incredible. My son's here. It, it was just unbelievable, and a lot of it still seems so surreal. This over here is my uh, podium jacket, and then my medal's actually right here. The 2020 Men's Super Heavyweight Silver Medal. And when they put that medal around my neck, it felt, it felt horrible, honestly. I wanted to cry. It was because I just lost the fight. <laughs> Guys, I, I gave him my all. I really did. I, I mean, at the end of the day, the eight-year-old me was running around town saying he was going to be an Olympic gold medalist, not silver medalist. You know, the 17-year-old me didn't miss prom to get a silver medal. It's tough, man. It's, it's tough getting so close to your dream and not getting there. When I first came back to Tulare, I still felt like I failed them. At the Galaxy Movie Theater, they're still, we're so proud of you, Key Richard Torres. I have a mural, and I lost that last fight. Everything leading up to the Olympics was there, and I was, I had it in reach, and I came up short. I felt like I let everybody down. And I still feel that way a little bit. You're sitting at home, like, watching somebody live their dream, and you're like, I can't be prouder of you, like, in this moment, and you feel like you let me down. So I think that was the hardest part of, like, um, the phone call after the Olympics was that. Because. I'm honestly excited that they signed them, and now I have more motivation to train, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. You know, it gives me a line, and it gives me a goal now. You want to look heavenly, so make sure your lines and your feet are stretched. Dancing didn't really come about, honestly, until Lomachenko. Lomachenko said that he did Ukrainian ballet, and that's how he got his footwork so great. I would go to school dances, but I wouldn't know what I was doing at all. Well, I'm nowhere near the best dancer. I wouldn't call myself a good dancer. I would say I'd try. <laughs> um, I kind of fell in love with that, honestly. I thought it was really cool. The best characteristic about him was his humble attitude. And he never bragged about who he was. He never mentioned anything. He just wanted to be a student, blend in, and learn. And up, toss, and drop down. Swing around, and hold. Beautiful! Good. Good. I would see changes in my boxing, too. I would move a little bit better. I'm a little louder on my feet, you know? Good job, Jason. good job. Yeah, nice yes. job, nice job. Always awesome. I was extra excited because I got to have him a second semester, and he was featured as Gaston in our ballet routine. Oh my goodness, he was the, the best Gaston I'd ever seen, and he did such a good job. And it was so, it was just, have you seen that video? It was Beauty and the Beast, and I honestly thought he was just gonna be a prop. I thought, oh, they're gonna have you go in there and do one lift and walk up back off stage. I thought it was like gonna be using me in one scene, like a tree. He doesn't embarrass. <laughs> he kind of rolls with it pretty easily. It is terrifying. I'm not even gonna lie to you. It is worse than going into the lanes at the Olympics because you go in there and you're so out of position. You know, you just gotta rock with it. I feel like that's really taught me some really valuable lessons on how to just kind of be okay with yourself just from putting yourself in outside situations. You need to learn things along the way.
got 10 seconds. Let's go. On in by halfway up. Give it a little shoulder roll. Time. When I was a kid, my dad set up a boxing ring in the middle of the, the, the garage. It was a carport. He drilled some holes into the poles, put some water hose and a carpet on the ground, and brought these three kids in that were kind of trouble in town. Last round coming up, guys. Last round. He uh, you know, gave me that love and passion of working with kids and working with athletes. I see a lot of guys staying on the outskirts of things. Remember, you're boxing and you're a one-man show, baby. Everybody's coming to see you when you're actually boxing. You want to be the star of the show. This is where I start seeing where my fighters are. This is where I start seeing where my boxers are going to come from. Richard said, you know, my dad wants me to take over the boxing club. It's a legacy. Will you help me? Will you be my partner in this? I knew what it took to run a club, a nonprofit club, dealing with the kids that are at risk and everything. It, you know, it, it involves your life. A lot of these kids push me, man. You know, a lot of these guys, they're here, like, are really at risk youth, you know? While they mess around a little bit now, they have drive. Who was your very No, I started boxing when I was eight. I started sparring when I was four. Every day you see him, you get to say hi, and you're like, he's nice and yeah. funny. <laughs> he's gonna knock him out. He's gonna knock, knock him out. out. Like round one, round one. All of us here are gonna be, we're all gonna be champions. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a Super Bowl champion. Not him for sure. Him. He punches really hard. Show me good. Some guys were from my old middle school, uh, Palo Verde. Some guys here from Early Mar Middle School. Shout out Early Mar Middle School. And my mom, she works there. It's, it's just really cool to see everybody kind of just doing their own thing and, and working to be the best version of themselves. So, like, we couldn't do anything. Like, we literally had to stay with each other 24 7. Like, Charlie cut my hair. Yeah, that I started off cutting it myself, and then Charlie came and saved the day. I told that saved the day. Mm -hmm. So, I'm pregnant with Kiki, and I know it's gonna be a boy, and my husband's like, yeah. You know, so he's all excited. He'd rub my belly, and, you know, I'd kind of like do the little shots left, right, to, you know, kind of like a little combination. <laughs> she got that a little wrong, so. Wow. She'd say, oh. I go, what happened? Kick me in the, in the lung. And all of a sudden, oh. and what happened? Well, he punched me. And I said, look, you can see his, his hand. I put my hands on, on, her, on her belly. And I say, go, 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 left, left, left. <laughs> you know, so that's how it was. It's like I was working the mitts with them, you know? I hadn't anticipated Kiki liking it so much. He was always pushing and trying and striving always to be the best, always to be on top, always to be number one. So it was just kind of something born in him. I know. <laughs> we might have to make a special trip. They say you get to keep three things when you're a student athlete. There's your academics, there's your athletics, and there's your social life. You get to keep two of the three things. And I kept academics and athletics. I did not have a social life outside of school. You're going to have to miss out on a lot of cool, fun things that happen in your social life. And people would be telling you, like, oh, this happened, but you weren't there. And once you realize that it's not forced upon you and that you get that choice, it makes it easier to go and make those sacrifices. Thanks for being here. And it's pretty exciting that I get to honor the athletic accomplishments of one of our own. Tulare High School students, Richard Kiki Torres Jr., giving back to your community in more ways than I could list. I loved going to high school, and just to be back here is fun, but to be back here for the reasons I am, because they named a gym after me, I mean, it's incredible. Everyone usually talks about what boxing can do for you outside of life, right? But I think a lot of people fail to recognize what your outside life can bring to boxing. And Mish Noak has brought me so much, so thank you. Three, two, one. So Richard Torres Jr. Gymnasium, in honor and recognition of Richard Torres Jr. 
Mission Out Class of 2017, Olympic Silver Medalist Boxer of 2020, dedicated February 4th, 2022. Yeah. I never would have guessed that they would have had like a gym named after me, you know. And yeah, I'm still at the beginning of my professional career, you know. So this is a lot of motivation for me to make sure that that was worth it, but to make sure that I also have progress. All right, ladies and gents, this is what you call candy rockets. So this would be like a normal rocket engine, but with the amount of fuel we're putting in, it would be like times three, so. In high school, I think what surprised me most was I, I liked hanging out with the nerds more than I liked hanging out with the athletes. This is my friend Ola. He's my one of my uh, high school friends that we did all this stuff together. <laughs> my friends to this day that I still hang out with, we, uh, we build rockets, you know? We, we go and we'll do escape rooms. So this is what the fuel looks like when it's melted. Things that aren't really your stereotypical pro boxer things to do, you know? I'm Richard. I'm Gavin. I'm Lomzy. And this is the Portable Rocket Lab. Two, one. <laughs> that was kind of scary. Him and his little buddies come home and they're like, hey, Mom, we're going to build a rocket. Oh, good for you, you know, right? Because you want to encourage that creativity and all that. Richard, my husband, comes in and he's like, what are you doing? The house smells like God knows what. And I'm like, oh, we're making rocket fuel. And he's like, no, 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 you're not. Stop it right now. <laughs> we almost got suspended for building rockets in high school because we asked the chemistry teacher how to make more efficient fuel. And he didn't like that, so he called all of our parents. We're still doing it, though. That's rocket fuel. But well, that's how we know that the rockets work. <laughs> and now we go test. With Kiki, he's always been really big on, if you like me, you like me. I am who I am. So if you're at robotics and we're friends, that's awesome. I know a lot of his friends actually came from the robotics team. All and I, we actually met in engineering, right? Yeah. I remember the first time we met in the classroom? I think we're doing calculus problems on the board. The reason All and I get along so well is because that problem solving is just an amazing feeling to have. You can correlate that with anything too, like boxing. You gotta figure out how to change, how to move. You go back to the corner, you can ask your friends for help, but at the end of the day, it's all you. There's about a 40% chance that this just blows up. <laughs> and five, four, three, two. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd he go? Oh, God. So I first learned chess when I was eight or nine. It was like a boxing tournament at the Wayne's. I wasn't even fighting yet. These kids, they brought out a chessboard to wait for weigh-ins, because you had to wait for weigh-ins for hours. They showed me how to move the pieces, and I started moving the pieces, and I won. And I thought it was a really interesting game. Even though I didn't understand all the complexities behind it, I thought, like, oh, this is, this is fun, you know? So there's three kind of games you play in chess. There's the opening, the middle game, and the end game. And I think that in a lot of ways, boxing mimics that as well. You have the opening rounds, you have the middle rounds, and you have the end rounds. In the opening, you're setting up your attack. So you move a pawn, knowing that the most likely move back is another pawn. You'll think of three different moves ahead. You get to recognize that they have one major tendency. Maybe it's a hook stepping back, or maybe it's the same time punch. If I know that that's the line he takes, then I can build a sequence off that line. In the middle game, you're trying to figure out how to get to that king. And the end game is where you finish it off. 
the end game shots are kind of the checkmates. <laughs> It's all a game, you know? When you finally have that first fight, where you're thinking, it is incredible. It's like a, like a, a new level. From Tulare, California, Richard Kiki Torres Jr. I love him to pieces, but he's never been Mr. Slick, Hip, and Cool. But he's very genuine, and I think that's why people find him so enduring, and they, they like him. will be at a boxing show and people turn like, yeah, your son is a beast. And he puts him through the ropes momentarily and down goes Hefney. That's what you see for just that snippet because the Kiki that I know is probably the sweetest, kindest, gentlest guy. I don't see my son being the black hat cowboy, you know, the bad guy. He's just not in him, you know. Richard Torres Jr. The heavyweight with the eclectic interests, the evolved thinker. Back in the day, in, in, in the 50s and stuff, men, women, and fans, oh, that's the world champion. Man, that's, hey, that's a great guy, you know? Boxing is a gentleman's board, but once that bell rings, it's a rough sport. The idea behind the game is hit you in the face and put you out. And I've always told him that. I always lectured that to him and preached that to him and says, hey, this is a rough game. But, you know, he is a nice guy. But you see him inside the ring, and, and he flips the switch. Here comes the Olympian, Torres. Young man from Tulare, California. A big left hand and a huge right, and it is a face plant. When I land a clean shot, once I feel that impact, and I understand that he's hurt, oh, I, I'm, I'm going in for the kill. Big shot! Torres floors him in the final seconds of round one. Oh, oh my God. God. Wow. Boxing was a part of me. Like, I never got into boxing. I never really stayed into boxing. It's kind of like asking what I like most about my right hand. It's me, you know? It, it is who I am. It's a matter of time. Look at that. Go to sleep. Sends him back with a three-punch combination. Oh, my goodness. He'll tell you sometimes, and he made his comment. He goes, I never knew if I was that guy. I said, what do you think now? He goes, I'm that guy. <laughs> 